लास्ट टाइम वी वर डिस्कसिंग ये प्लीज बंद कर दें और इनको प्लीज मना भी कर दें सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग ऑपरेटर्स दे आर ऑल लीनियर ऑपरेटर्स एंड यू आर वेल फेमिलियर विद दम आई एम जस्ट डिस्कसिंग फॉर मेनली टू रीजंस वन इज दैट सम पीपल सेड दैट दे हैवन डेल्ट विद uh vector spaces which have uh as complex numbers as their field and secondly because of this new dirac notation so this bracket notation we are using is also called the dirac notation so we had these operators x on a vector and gives you another vector in a linear fa fashion now uh since this is linear we can we know everything about the operator about a to its action on a basis so if you just know how it acts on the basis elements then you know everything there is to know about these operators and then you can compute so if i is a basis this is a basis you can compute this so action of i a on i whatever vector you get you take its dot its scalar product with j and these things we are calling the jth ith uh matrix element of these operators now given this what what does it tell you what can you do with it so if you have if you know these matrix elements you are given any vector i can expand this vector in a basis in the same basis as well where v i are components then this action by linearity is this action and now if i uh do a, whatever vector i get over here let's call it w i want to know what is this vector i can know the vector just by knowing its components so i take a dot product with the basis elements this is the jth component because this is this expansion and if i take a dot with j supposing that it's an orthonormal basis only in that case not otherwise then this is a uh what's going on okay delta ji it gives you wj j picks up the jth component you know all this very well so i then i know that what is the jth component of the vector which i get through the action of a because of linearity this comes out so this is summation i a j i v i so what you have is i can represent this vector to this column which is the column of the components in this basis and w is which is the action of a on v i can represent it with a column as well which are the components of w in this same basis and i want to know how do i get these from here so it tells you that is just the matrix action this is just a matrix product
where these are the this is the matrix this matrix you compute by doing just this jth ith element of this now this is when you are representing these vectors and these uh, operators to column vectors and to matrices but some many a times you don't want to do it you just want to work with abstract vectors you have expansion of your vectors as a abstract vector in a basis so this v when i write this this is not a representation i'm not writing a column it's a expansion in a particular set which is this basis so similarly you can write same kind of expression for the operators as some kind of an expansion in the basis and it's actually given by this thing Uh, so if you are expanding it in the basis i you take the ith jth matrix elements of this a and then write an object like this so it's an expansion in these kind of objects what is any object if i write like this take two vectors and first i write the cat and then the bra when i write bra and then cat this is a scalar product a number but when i write a cat and then a bra then this looks like an operator so it can act on any other vector let's say u if i provide it a cat u it can act on it and this gives me a number so let's call it c so it's c times v another vector so an object like this is an operator and a linear combination of such objects is still an operator it just acts linearly so this guy is an operator and this when this x on v the claim is that this is this has the same action this expansion if av is w then this expansion will give me w and we can see it so this acts on v and what is this this is v uh, j and i know like we we just wrote it over here when you do this this linear combination now summation i j a i j v j is actually actually the w i's so i get summation i w i i which is just the expansion of w so that means this is the correct expansion of a as an abstract operator this one uh, and i can get it by computing the matrix elements now there is an operator a special operator identity operator 
I'm going to go to this mathematics very quickly because first of all, uh, it's supposed to be easy and you're supposed to know linear algebra is just a new notation. And also I, we need to cover some ground. So I, you, you need to just do practice at home. I'll suggest problems from Shankar. This is mostly what I'm doing is all there in Shankar. And I'll suggest some problems as well from Shankar, which you can do for practice. So if I look at the identity operator, what does it do? It doesn't do anything to any vector. It's expansion. I can write, I can just guess in any basis is this. Or you can compute because the matrix elements of identity operator in any basis are just the diagonal one, one, one. It gives you the identity matrix. But this you can just check. I on V, according to this representation, is these are just the components. And this is just V, expansion of V. So this is expression for identity. And it's actually very useful in proving various results. And this is called, also called resolution of identity. And you can do it in any basis. Now, what I wanted to discuss next. Should I? Yeah, maybe I should, I can discuss this. So let's consider this operator, sigma two. I'm not giving you an operator. I'm giving you, so first of all, let me define which space I'm working in. So suppose this is an example. We are in a two dimensional Hilbert space. There's not much structure in finite dimensional Hilbert spaces. If you are, if you're given um, the dimension and the scalar part, everything is same. And you're defining it by giving a basis, an orthonormal basis. It's two dimensional, so there are two vectors and I'm just naming them one and two. So by orthonormality just means their length is one and their mutual scalar product is zero. And I'm telling you that I have an operator, let's call it sigma two, whose matrix elements are zero minus iota iota zero. That means Sigma, well, let me put the two here, or maybe let's, uh, I'll come back while I was writing two, but let me just, just choose this symbol sigma. I just want to clutter, I don't want to clutter the uh, notation at this point. So sigma one, one is zero. Sigma one, two is minus iota. First is row, second is column, sigma two, one is iota, and sigma two, two is zero. So I'm just defining this operator by giving matrix elements. So if you give the matrix elements, you have defined an operator. And this expansion would be, you don't, you don't have this term because the, the coefficient in front of it is zero. You have this. And then you have this. 
So this is the expression for this object. And uh, you can check its action on any one of them. So for example, if I take this guy and I know that if I take this guy, I can represent it by one zero because its expansion is one times one plus zero times two. So this is its column representative. So when this acts on it, I get uh, zero times zero and iota. So I get this back. So the action of this should give me this. So you can check it by action on one. I now take this guy. And this is acting on one. Two, one. So this is zero and this is one. So it does give me back iota two. And we can check this very easily. If you have two operators, A and B, if the matrix elements of A and B are, if they are A, I, J, B, I, J, then I can define this new operator, C, which is the product of A and B. Product by product, you mean you first act with B and then act with A. Its matrix elements, I, J, will just be the matrix product. How can you prove it? I just want to show the proof because of the use of this notation. So you want to compute this thing. You introduce this thing is very useful. You introduce a resolution of identity. I can include an identity at any point, at any anywhere, it just doesn't do anything. So instead of identity, I write a resolution. So what do I get? I get K out B, oh, oh yes. So I, A, K, K, B, J, which is just we want what we wanted to prove is a matrix product of these two guys. We defined the Hermitian operators last time, did we? We didn't. I think we did, didn't we? Yeah, we, we had defined it. So just a reminder that if you have a Hermitian operator, well, first, first of all, let me just do something else and this will recall everything. So if you have, if the A, A has matrix elements, A, I, J, then matrix elements 
of the Hermitian conjugate. Every operator has a Hermitian conjugate. R A star J I. So that means if I make the matrix of A, then the matrix of A dagger is going to be the transposed and then complex conjugated, the Hermitian conjugated matrix. This is called the Hermitian conjugate of a matrix. So how can you prove this thing? So just again, a reminder that if you have an operator, this is understood that it's acting on the right hand side, not on the left. And when you are dealing with operators and checking their hermicity or talking about their emission conjugates, at least in the beginning, it's helpful to go back to the old notation, where it's clear that the A is acting only on J, not on I. And the scalar part you write using your usual bracket. And then the definition, this thing is A, I, J. Then the, by definition, this is equal to A, I, J. And now I want to compute the matrix element of A dagger. But in the matrix element, this guy has to be here because this is how you define it. Acting on over here. There's something on my hands by so I can reverse the order by introducing a star. And then I can take a star to remove the star on the right hand side. Now that means, oh, sorry, this is J and this is I. That means I have caught the jth ith element of A dagger, which is equal to ith jth element of A con complex conjugated. So that means what I claimed that if you have the matrix of A dagger, this is going to be equal to the matrix of A transposed and complex conjugated. Those exchange with columns. Now, if you have a uh, Hermitian operator. Then what will happen? Then A dagger is same as A. So that means the matrix elements of A dagger are same as matrix elements of AJ. But we know that the matrix elements of A, A dagger are this. So on the matrix elements, this is true if and only if A is a Hermitian operator. So you can just check the uh, matrix and that if it's Hermitian matrix, then the operator corresponding operator is Hermitian operator. We talked about the eigenvalues. No, we didn't. Okay. Eigenvalues of an operator. So you second postulate is second but uh, now I'm thinking uh, I at this point I can introduce the third postulate, but that needs eigenvalues. It's, it's written in terms of eigenvalues. So let me just first discuss what are the eigenvalues and then I'll 
write the third postulate. So what are the eigenvalues of an operator? Well, you are very familiar. If this is the case, maybe I should use for now a different symbol. If you have a vector V and this V produced under the action of an operator, then this means you, you just call it, this is just naming, V is an eigenvector. And A is the eigenvalue, the corresponding eigenvalue. Uh, Now, how do you find the eigenvalues? Well, it's the usual thing. I can bring this guy over there by subtracting on both sides. I get a zero here. And this I can write as this operator acting on V with a zero. And then I multiply by the inverse operator. I get a one since it's an inverse operator. So you have an, a linear operator acting on zero and giving you something non-zero. This is not just not possible for linear operators. So this is impossible. That means this implies if this holds, then A minus AI does not have an inverse. And by the usual methods, you can show that uh, if A inverse If A has matrix elements, A, A, the matrix of A inverse is just the inverse matrix. Of A. So what you need is that if I compute the matrix elements of this and then compute the determinant of this matrix, then this determinant is going to be zero. So this is the condition to for the eigenvalue equation to hold. This is called the characteristic equation. Now, I'm. So, what will you have? What will you have over here? You will have these are just usual arguments. You are very well aware with them. I can consider this matrix, but on the diagonal, I'm subtracting a number. and so on. So when I open the determinant, I can start from here and then I'll be multiplying with different things, but these all will get multiplied. So I will have get, and this I put equal to zero. A polynomial of degree N in A, if the dimension of my Hilbert space is N, because that would be the size of this matrix then, and you will have the, the 
that uh, degree polynomial and you are putting that equal to zero. So you have a polynomial of degree n and, and you are putting it equal to zero. That will have n roots. Because if you have a polynomial of degree n in complex numbers, you can find n roots. You may not have n roots in uh, reals, but in complex numbers, you will always have n roots. n roots, but some of them can be repeated. And they are complex in general. So what is essentially saying is that you will have this polynomial put equal to zero, you can factorize it. That means you can factorize like this. This will always be possible where a1 to a n are called the roots. These are fixed numbers. Well, a is a variable. Now, I'm not saying you, you have n numbers because you have n factors over here, but some of them can be repeated. be same. Now, we can just do the previous example. So if I have this operator, which was represented by this guy, then to find the eigenvalues, you get this determinant. No, why is doing problem? Did I have minus i up there? Yeah, I had it over here. So I have this equation. It, this operator was sigma. Why this pen is giving me a problem? I need to fix some things about it. I think there's some problem with palm ejection. So the, the, and this is the equation we are trying to solve. So we have this, and this gives us lambda square minus minus plus, and again, minus one, zero. So lambda uh, is equal to plus minus one. And you can find the, now you can find the eigenvectors. So, so, so we had two dimensional space, so we got two values. So for lambda equals to one, you have some vector whose expansion gives you the components V1 and V2. And you want to find the V1 and V2 so that eigenvalue is one, so it's repeated. So you get zero minus iota v2, iota v1, so 
So that means V2 is iota V1 and V1 is the other equation doesn't give you anything. It's same. So one of them is free. You will always have this freedom in eigenvalues because whenever you have an eigenvalue equation, I can replace V by a scaled V. I can multiply with a number. And because of linearity, that number goes out. So any, uh, you start with any vector, the whole line along that is still uh, eigenvectors. So you always have the scale freedom. So one component is free. And by the way, remember that when we multiply now our field is complex. So I can multiply with any complex number. It's not that you just have a real number. And whenever I draw these vectors and draw these lines, you have to imagine these are not the usual lines. These are in complex, complex lines. I'm multiplying with the complex. It's just for uh, imagination. They're not like real lines. Now, so V2 is equal to iota V1. I can choose V1 to be one. So then I will have this as eigenvector. And if you want, you want to normalize it. Its norm is one minus iota, one iota, one plus uh, one. Two, so norm is, this is norm square. This is, so if I want to normalize, let's say this is normalize, I will divide by the under root of the norm. By the way, when I computed the norm, I, this is the operation we discussed last time. This thing should be, understood as taking the transpose and the conjugate. So this gives you this. But I don't have to, if I'm just checking that if it's a uh, eigenvector or not, I don't need to divide by this norm. But in any case, this one of the eigenvectors I can choose to be well, let me just put it in. Uh, one plus iota two. So now let's check if this is an eigenvector by acting with uh, this sigma. Sigma was, um, I have written here, minus iota one, two. plus iota two one. And this is acting on this vector. So by linearity, this one over under two goes out. And when this hits this, I get a zero. But when this hits this, I get an iota and iota minus plus one and two and two, they give me a one. Let me write the other expression as well. There was this thing, but this is zero. Then I have minus iota the plus iota, two, one, one, plus, minus, iota, iota gives me minus. So this is zero. And it does give me this vector back with an eigenvalue one.
Okay, now comes a very important result. I think, I don't know if you know it or not. So this is a theorem. By the way, again, so the thing which I cautioned last time that most of the things we will prove, we, the theorems we will prove, they are in finite dimensional case. The extension to infinite dimensions is not obvious. And the technical uh, definition of a Hilbert space that it's a complete in the Cauchy sense, which we defined last time, uh, when we are dealing with that to prove these things, it becomes hard, but that definition is there just to make sure that all these properties go through. So if you define the Hilbert space that way, all the things which I'm proving, they hold true, at least in certain sense, in the case of infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces as well. But retaining that property and working with that is very, very hard. So we will relax it, as I said last time, and I'll explain how do we relax that. But we will just make sure that whatever we are proving over here, this holds true because these properties are the ones which we will be using all the time. So we just have to be very careful sometimes that we are not losing any of them when we are working with infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces. But most of the time in practice, you just assume that they hold. And if something goes wrong, then you go and check if you made a mistake. So the theorem is eigenvalues because when you, for example, the corresponding thing for this theorem in case of infinite dimensional case case is uh, actually technically you have to define it a little differently. But we are not going to discuss those subtleties in this course. So for now, let's just think as if everything is uh, finite dimensional. And when we think of something as infinite dimensional, just think of it that you have this column which keeps going. Now, the theorem says eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are real. So proof is really easy. So suppose you have H, which is Hermitian, and this is a eigenvector with eigenvalue. W, this is a very common notation. If it's an eigenvector of an operator, you just put in the eigenvalue as its label that number as its label. And we have to show that W is real. So let me just do it in bracket notation and then we will, if it's confusing, we will do it in the other notation as well. When I do this, act with this, uh, take the scalar part with W, by linearity W goes out and I get this. But by hermicity, this X that way as well. So you get a W, but this W is being multiplied to the bar. So you have to be careful. And we had this as part of our definition of the, uh, the scalar product, because the way it's defined, when you pull something out from here, it gets a star. So this gives you W star minus W. But since W is not zero, and none of the vectors has a zero norm, except the, this is non-zero, except the zero vector, no, none of them have a zero norm. So this is zero and W star is W. If you do it in more older notation, then it would be like this. This is equal to 
W. W comes out because of the linearity. And this is some number. Let's call it hash. But now I'm using hermicity. Hermicity means that if I bring it to this guy, I'm I have to use the same operator. That's the very definition of this being a Hermitian operator. So eigenvalue, this is just a, now old notation, so I don't have to worry, it's just an eigenvector. Now I can use flip using a star and this goes out as a star. This is again hash because the norm is positive. This was part of the definition of vector space that this is a number which is a positive number. It's not a complex number. So star is on this is the star. And this shows that W star is W. Now, there's another theorem. Now I will be very quick in proving it because I'm just assuming that this is a... Sir, huh? sir again, if you are operator with a Hermitian, now, so we cannot split like this. So yeah. the conjugate huh. And then we cannot prove that, uh, that the eigenvalues are real and they're not real in general. So by the way, I just want to announce that I am taking attendance. So, because I see that not many people are there and I'm keeping a record of it. Now, uh, yeah, there's another theorem. This I'm going to prove very quickly and just not go into like nitty gritties because those things I think they're so obvious. You have proved those things so many times that I'll not go into proving each and every detail. That's very obvious. So it says that to every Hermitian operator, it's there exists, by the way, if you have a, a operator, every operator has, uh, if you are in n dimensional space, n eigenvalues. There exists uh, an auth a basis, well, I should say an orthonormal basis. of eigenvectors of it. So if you have an Hermitian operator, you can find its eigenvectors. You can choose the eigenvectors in such a way. From the eigenvectors, you can pick up those eigenvectors so that they form a basis. Proof. So you have pick an eigenvalue W1, it will have at least W1 and pick any, any eigenvector. that has this eigenvalue. So let's say it is this guy, W1. Let me call it one. Uh, now, 
this guy that means you will then have a whole one dimensional space let's call it v1 which are all eigenvectors with same eigenvalue Now you construct, consider the orthogonal comp com uh, complement. To V1, let's say it's V1 orthogonal comp complement. What do I mean by that? Is all the vectors which are orthogonal to all the vectors in V1 then v1 is a is a subspace of the full space v well we have been calling it h and in fact let's write it the other way you have a, a, a direct sum. So all the vectors are of this form. You have the vectors from this space and then the others. Well, this, this is how you have, you can split all your vectors This way, where W belongs to the orthogonal complement. And you can do it in a unique way. This is fairly obvious. This is standard thing you do in linear algebra. No complex properties go into this splitting of the vector space. I'm just picking up the orthogonal complements. Now, what will happen if I do this? Where V1 belongs to this subspace, the one dimensional subspace which I have created. This will give me many uh, eigenvalue W1 kata kya kata? W1. Well, actually, if I compute in this vector. This go map the starting vector you know I can normalize it I can choose it to be normalized I can just normalize it by hand if it's not normalized with the one I picked so, sorry so this will give me w1 so and I choose a basis choose an orthonormal basis Let's call them two, three, up to n in the orthogonal comp complement. So the full basis is then just this. Is the full basis. So what would be these guys? If I take any of these two or three, every time I pull out W1 and then I'm making these, but these are zero because they live in the orthogonal complement. 
So that means these guys, hi1 would be 1 if i is equal to 1 and 0 if i is anything else. So that means if I build this, uh, well, it won't be 1, it would be w1. because I'll be hitting with a one from here. And these are giving me the rows. I fixed the column to be first. And it says me tells me that the row entries are all zero. So the first column is just this guy. But I know that it's a Hermitian operator. So if I exchange the column with the rows, I just get the start things. But these are all zero, so they give me zero over here. And that's, I have fixed up this thing. Now I need this guy. Now over here, I will again have uh, an eigenvector. So I go to, let's say I go to the next eigenvalue w2 and i'm not saying that w2 is equal to w1 is not necessarily two it's just the next root over there the first root gives me one eigenvector, which has given me one dimensional space. So the next eigenvector has to live. It will have an eigenvector living in the orthogonal complement. Because all vectors can be uh, resolved as sum of this vector uh, one plus the others, but one is not there. So they live in over here. And I can repeat the process. So I pick in this space because each subspace acts exactly like a full space. So over here, I pick a vector out of this basis, I will, it may not be like one of the basis vectors which I have chosen. It will be a linear combination, but I pick that up, separate it out. So take this one dimensional subspace inside the orthogonal complement and make the orthogonal complement of this inside this. So that V2 plus V2 orthogonal is equal to V1 orthogonal. So then I'll show, I'll be able to show that I have W2 over here and all zeros here. And reduce the size of the matrix. And I can keep continuing. And by choosing these orthogonal complements, it will take this form in a particular basis, which is necessarily orthonormal, because that's how we constructed it by at each step. 
finding orthogonal complements. So all of them are, all of these basis vectors are orthogonal to each other. And at each state, state the, these orthogonal vectors were the eigenvectors. And the basis vectors are eigenvectors of H. So we have proved it. There's just uh, something, a comment. If two vectors, let's say one and two, have same eigenvalue, W, let's say W1, let's say W, then any linear combination of them is also an eigenvector with same eigenvalue. So I can find, so for example, if I have two, I can find two new linear combinations such that one dash and two dash are linearly independent, but they don't have to be orthogonal because I'm just making a linear combination. I can make arbitrary linear combination. Just like if we take ordinary example, if you have like I and J, they are orthogonal, but I can make a linear combination of and get like this vector and this vector. They are linearly independent, but not orthogonal. So similarly, I can make linear combination, arbitrary linear combination and get a new basis, which is not linear, which is uh, uh, a new basis is the new basis of this two dimensional subspace. It's a subspace because if I make linear combination, I still get a eigenvector. So eigenvectors having same eigenvalue live in a whole subspace of eigenvectors. I should say they form having same eigenvalue form a subspace. of this. So if I start with these, I can get some others. Or if I choose, I can also make orthogonal new combination, but different from the original one. I can choose any one of those basis vectors. But if they are eigenvalues are distinct, two eigenvalues are distinct, then I'm stuck with these because all I can do is scale them. I cannot change them. The moment I change them, I don't have the eigenvector with the same eigenvalue. So in general, if you are given an eigenbasis, it may not be all orthogonal if the eigen so an eigenbasis, what is an eigenbasis? Uh, it's a basis where each element is an eigenvector of H, an eigenbasis of an operator. 
of a Hermitian operator. So it's a basis where each element is an eigenvector of H. It will always exist because we proved that you at least have one available to you, which is actually orthogonal basis. But we just saw that if the eigenvalues are, two of the eigenvalues are same, two or three, if you have two, then you have a two dimensional subspace where each vector in that subspace is an eigenvector. If you have three, then you have three dimensional subspace where each vector in that subspace is an eigenvector. And then you can choose any basis vectors in that subspace that not need the, that need not be orthogonal and you will still have an eigenbasis. So in case of repeated eigenvalues, eigenbasis that are not orthogonal will exist. And actually you will have an infinite number of bases. And you will have an infinite number of orthogonal bases as well, because if you, even if you have a two dimensional subspace, you can rigidly keep rotating over here every time making sure that they remain uh, orthogonal, but you have still have new vectors. But if you are given a non-orthogonal eigenbasis, you can obviously uh, employ the Gram-Schmidt and you have just have to do it within the eigenspace. And since the in the eigenspace uh, of where the uh, eigenspace where you have the same eigenvalue, repeated eigenvalue, since each vector over there is an eigenvector. So you, if you do Gram-Schmidt within remaining in that eigenspace, it does not destroy the fact that you started with the eigenvectors. Whatever vectors you end up with will still be eigenvectors. So you can do the Gram-Schmidt and get an orthogonal eigenbasis. So repeated or non-repeated orthogonal bases are always there, but if they are repeated values, then you have both orthogonal and non-orthogonal bases. By the way, these repeated eigenvalues, these are called degenerate. And what else? Maybe I can talk about unitary operators. Is there any question? Okay. So unitary operators, you can define this way. If u u dagger is equal to i, then it's unitary. And what does it mean in terms of the matrix elements? Well, you can do this. Well, if you have, yeah, let's do this. So the, uh, the matrix elements of identity are the Kronecker delta. And over here, I can introduce a resolution 
of identity. So this is UKI and this is U dagger JK. But I know that the U dagger JK is UK J star. I can interpret it actually in many different i can just write it like this then it says the usual thing that the matrix of u if you take the matrix of u so here's the matrix of u then you transpose it and take the star so that means you make the hermitian conjugate of it you will get the identity matrix. So instead of the operators, if I think in terms of matrices, let me put a tilde. Then the Hermitian conjugated matrix times the matrix gives me identity. So that means you get the inverse matrix just by doing the transpose and the star. But this thing is saying even something more. what it says is let's fix i and j so when i fix i i'm fixing the fixing a column I run over k. So for each i, I have a column. And I can think of this matrix as built up of n column. So square matrix. Now it says that if I pick the ith column, and the jth column, and what do I do then? I take the I take the complex conjugate of this jth column, and this is just the scalar product of jth and ith column. And it's telling me that this is one or zero. one if j is equal to i and zero if j is not equal to i so that means these columns are orthogonal actually orthogonal and normalized so the columns are orthonormal and how many you have you have n orthonormal columns in each unitary operators matrix but ortho orthogonal uh, vectors are automatically linearly independent so they form a basis And they form a basis. So what can I say about that? Maybe I can do an example. Well, you can do this thing. Uh, well, let me just do another theorem first. 
eigen values of unitary operators are phases they are of this form again this is super easy so if you have an eigen sir yahan pe phases se kya ho raha hai ha sir phases phases ka matlab hai a number of form e over theta every complex number i can write like this so it's saying that r is 1 okay okay yeah okay So this is some complex number W. Eigenvalue is some complex number W. But again, just like I did before, I take scalar product with U. And let me write it in old notation. Will be a little bit more clear. So this comes out. now this goes and hits over here mm well i should have used i can't use that thing over here. i should have used it this the property of unitarity so let me start from here u u dagger w on w should be w w equal to some number positive number h this guy is this you no this is not this this guy is that's why you have to be very careful you have to remember if it's not hermitian it acts only on the when you write this it's understood that everything is acting on the right hand side if i have to bring it and make it act on the other side then it will become the conjugate of this so i bring it over there that becomes the conjugate of the conjugate but i know that the conjugate of the conjugate is the operator itself so i get w so this when i pull out from here i get a star when i pull out from here i get a w this is the same number hash so it's saying the w star w is 1 w mod square is 1 so that means w is of this form r is 1 so eigen values are phases and just like we did before you can show that the eigen vectors although eigen values are not real but eigen vectors are uh they still exist exists a basis orthonormal basis basis of eigen vectors of a unitary operator let's leave it as an exercise pretty much same logic and let's instead just do a quick example and then close we will meet tomorrow second part for the day you matlab i give and over तो मगर हमने तो ये ऑनलाइन ही करनी है ना 
तो लेट्स वी विल मीट टुमारो एंड सर टाइम बता दीजिए क्या टाइम डिसाइड हुआ था उस दिन दो बजे कि चार बजे हाँ तो चार लेट्स मीट एट फोर आई एम फाइन किसी को कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं नहीं चार से ही सर फोर ठीक है तीन बजे वो नमाज तो किबन दो घंटे की दो बिकॉज आज तो छोटी हुई थी ना तो जो आज हमने यहाँ से टाइम हमने वो किया वी विल मेक अप हाँ वो हमेशा ऑनलाइन हो गया मुझे तो लग रहा है ये भी ऑनलाइन ही करनी पड़ेगी क्योंकि इसका कोई फायदा नहीं है हेलो जी आप कौन या सो लेट्स डू दिस एग्जांपल Let's consider an operator whose matrix elements are these. So this is unitary because you can very easily check if I take the transpose, is they are real? So transpose and Hermitian conjugates are same. This is just the rotation operator. Is identity. Which is same as in this case, our dagger R is a equal to identity, and you can check that the uh, eigenvalues or what are the eigenvalues? Can you check? It's cosine theta minus lambda. This determinant put to zero. Theta by theta. Hmm. Or by i theta. And minus. So you have lambda square minus two lambda cosine theta plus one. So if I use the, what will happen? हम्म, I just wanted to do it. सर वो quadratic formula से कर लेंगे फिर वो. Yeah, that's what I wanted to complete. So B इसमें क्या है? Minus two lambda. So you get a two lambda. Two cos minus. Minus two cos theta. नहीं minus two lambda नहीं minus two. Minus two cos theta. Plus four cosine square theta minus four over two times a, which is two. So twos cancel. Cosine square theta minus one, which is minus sine square theta. So it is a phase, and in this case, it's just the complex conjugate of each other. Um, maybe we should stop here. I think I had other things, but let's stop here. So tomorrow we will start at four. But it will be like a three-hour class because we did like one class. A four me kya problem hai? Nee, वैसे four me kya problem hai? Razi, Razi no din. Sir, sir, मैं कह रहा था कि four पे ही कर लें. मुझे मतलब three में थोड़ा सा problem था कि वो मेरी इससे पहले एक class. मगे कल तो नहीं ना class होगी. नहीं sir, वो supervisor के साथ meeting है तो. पहले से अरेंज करी हुई मैंने तीन बजे की वजह से 
वो मतलब है तो पहले से बीच में नमाज का ब्रेक भी और फिर वो साढ़े तीन पे खत्म होगी तो हम थ्री थर्टी पे शुरू कर सकते हैं चलो थ्री थर्टी पे शुरू कर लेते हैं थैंक यू सर थैंक यू